Welcome to Film Therapy, the unofficial, unlicensed movie podcast. If the film says f- we can say it too. So check the film rating, and that will be our episode rating. Thank you for listening. Hello, we have a very special film to talk about today. We are going to be talking about uh, Donnie Dargo. And uh, just to be clear, we watched the theatrical version. Um, it was my first time watching, and I don't think my life will ever be the same. That's good. That's the point of Donnie Darko. I wish I had seen this in high school because this would have been my favorite movie in high school. Yeah, I think like when I came to film school and everyone was like, what's your favorite film? I was like, Donnie Darko, because it's it changed my life. It did. It did. It's it's so just it's ugh, it's so great. I then changed it to Fight Club, but I then I'm going I'm going back to Donnie Darko and saying like that's definitely one of my favorite films, if not your favorite. Yeah. So this is going to be a good, exciting episode for both of us. And thank you to everyone who has listened and followed us on all of the platforms and all of that. And um um we plan on doing this for at least a little while so we hope you stick with us yeah um we've (laughs) we've got some great we've got some couple episodes planned we've got episode 60 it's gonna be a big milestone it's um we're gonna be talking about something we've wanted to talk about since the very inception of this podcast um yes and no that was not that was not an intentional reference we're not talking about inception but we should do an episode on inception we should and interstellar Yes. Oh, I found Interstellar at a thrift store sealed on Blu-ray for under $5, so I got it. Oh, dang. It was so cool. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, I'll have to show you. I also got this um this steelbook of the um mo- this movie Insurgents, which is the second Divergent movie. Um uh-huh. and it's also like really pretty, so. Ooh, fun. I do have a piece of news to share with you. Yeah. So you know, you know the movie Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. I do. They are making a sequel. It was supposed to be a standalone movie, but now they're making a sequel. They're casting Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn, and it's going to be a musical. Excuse me, I'm speechless. (laughs) I don't, okay, I'm just going to say okay. Yeah, that's my thought too. Okay. Okay. You do that, Hollywood. You do that. I don't know. Maybe. So, Dottie Darko. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get into Dottie Darko. Okay, I'm gonna. F- I'm just gonna read a plot summary real quick. Um, That's a good idea. Because how do you summarize a film like Donnie Darko? Taken from IMDb. So, but this is some of these aren't very good. Uh, <laughs> sorry to the people who wrote those. Sorry, Mio, but like, <laughs> I'm just gonna try this one. Troubled adolescent Donnie Darko, played by Jake Gyllenhaal. I was going to say Christian Bale, (laughs) Uh, receives a disturbing vision that the world will end in 28 days. With the help of various characters, including a six-foot rabbit called Frank, he slowly discovers the mysterious physical and metaphysical laws that govern his life and that will lead up to the destruction of the universe. That's okay. It doesn't... I don't like the with the help of various characters because it's like... That sounds like a superhero thing to me. It's just kind of like... No, Donnie's, he's just... It's not a he's superhero just, movie. He's not a superhero. He's just out there. He is a troubled teen. Donnie's just a guy in high school. Something about this movie just really clicked with me. I really just felt so engaged with it. Like, like all the characters were either, like, you love the characters, you love to hate the characters. Um, the whole bit with uh, Patrick the Swayze on... Um, on um, Controlling Fear Part 1 on the TV. That was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when they're like, please stop tape. 
that reminded me of when I was a kid. And sometimes like we'd have, um, when I was younger, we'd have our guidance teacher come in and then like show us like tapes like that. Not, not exactly like that, but you know, those kind of, kind of vibe tapes about like making good choices and shit. <laughs> and um, then I was like, please stop tape. And then like the next week we'd watch the next part and watch the next part. And there was one, like, really long movie that we watched. It was, like, an epic, like, fantasy saga. And um, and I remember missing the first part because I was at the doctor's or something. And then when I came back, I remember being so confused. I remember, like, one of my friends was like, okay, so this is what happened the last time. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that one moment in this movie reminded me of that whole tunnel. That whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Did you I don't ever think watch I had anything like that in school. I yeah. I can't really remember if I did. It doesn't seem like I did. Maybe it was a more of a wood, mid midwestern thing. <laughs> I imagine so. Because this is in this takes place in Iowa. Of course, I grew up in Nebraska, which is not very far away from Midwest. If you can, you could also consider it the Midwest. I don't know. But definitely you can tell it's filmed in mostly L.A. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of confusing because like, like the first uh, opening shot when he's riding his bike up around the mountains, it's like obviously looks like L.A., you know. Looks like L.A., yeah. Yeah, then they're like, oh, wait, no, we're in Iowa. I'm like, okay, yeah, find, it, tell, find a hill in Iowa <laughs> and tell me. <laughs> I've been to Iowa. It both looks and doesn't look like this movie. <laughs> yeah, so what are your initial thoughts? This movie is great. It is absolutely captivating. I immediately... Immediately, it's been a week. I, I, I almost immediately want to watch it again. Like, I want to... It's, it's like the same feeling I got when watching Mulholland Drive, where I'm like, I have no idea what the heck this movie's about, but I love it. And it's yeah. and like I want to like study it and digest it and dissect it and um and just like fully like grasp it. You know, firmly grasp it. <laughs> so the ambiguous nature of the story is is great. The filmmaking too is also like really um really well done. Like there's the shot of the bus and then the camera's like spinning, like that was really cool. Mm -hmm. Um and and then and then and then just like like the the camera like somehow like you're following Donnie and you're like kind of like you're you're like attached to him but like the camera's also like detached from everything else because that's how he is um and like in that's that's really fascinating love that's that that's a really good interesting choice yeah definitely um i really liked um i i like like every character stands out like 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 even like the mom that that's like oh like everything Patrick Swayze is saying is like right even though like he's he's already like like we found a bunch of like you know what they find in his basement but then like because because Donnie burns it down but then but then she's still like I'm gonna go to his trial can you like like watch my children or whatever she says <laughs> yeah yeah can you, can you drive can you can you drive the kids to the school play and then and I'm like I'm like. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Excuse me, woman. It's so morbidly funny. Like, yeah. So that's what I like too. Is that every character, like whether you like them or not, just stands out. Um, um, Frank is so fucking creepy, and I love that. He's like the he's like the uh, the uh, oh, what's his name? Robert Robert Blake's character in Lost Highway. You know, like the mystery guy. Mm -hmm. How um. Like, 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 like he's like that where he shows up and he's really creepy and you can't tell if, 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 if like, if like he's helping the characters or not, or if yeah. there's like, if he has his own agenda. Yeah. Also like would be like the man from another place in Twin Peaks. Like you don't really know what he's doing, what his intentions are, but he's also just like initially gives you the creeps. Yes. But like in the best possible way. <laughs> And it was kind of like, it could have gone one of two ways when this movie came out. You know, like the the guy in a evil bunny suit, that could have been hilarious. You know, like it's such a such an insane character and thought in the script. 
Uh, but then the way they portrayed it and the way the costume came out and everything like it, yeah, it was creepy. I think the music had a lot to do with it. The music was really creepy. Um, mm -hmm. And it just, it it worked. It could have, it almost could have not worked, but it did. Yeah, it, it did. Um, it worked really well. Um, and then the indie music too was great. Yeah. Like the, like the, like the soundtrack to, like the score was great and then so was the soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah, so this takes place, what, 1988? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the movie came out in 2001. It takes place in 1988. Um, it doesn't really feel like the 80s a lot, other than the music. Yeah. It's kind of like, it, take, it can take place whenever, you know? Something that can happen anytime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do you think about the cast? I love that I recognized almost every actor in this movie. Right? Even even if I didn't know them like by name or I was like, "Oh, I know you from something, but I can't place it." Like I knew pretty much everybody and I loved that yeah. because because it 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 added this extra sense of like mysticism to the movie because I'm like, "I know these actors, but I'm watching the movie and I still see these characters. Like the characters feel like really alive." Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm I really think Donnie's such a fascinating character because on some ways he's like he, he he's like yes like I wish I wish I could like stand up to all the bullshit when I was in high school and I wish I, I wish I was like was like this like 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 had like this kind of like cool side that he does. Yeah. But then he's also like like a fucking psychopath. Yeah. And that's also so entertaining to watch that side because it's like these two sides. It's like when you're watching um um I haven't seen American Psycho but I really want to. But um, the comparison I can make is it's like when you're watching Death Note and like Light Yagami is like the most like interesting person because he's like he's 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 he's, he's like he's like he's like insane and he's like an evil genius. And, and then it's like it's like every time like every time something happens, it's like it's like like this. This is this is like so messed up, but I, I have to know more. I have to know like everything about like this person and like how they view things and like what they think their purpose is and what their actual purpose is. And like, you know, like Donnie's like a lot more troubled and like, he has a lot more like of a, like a, like a sympathetic side to him. Um, yeah. But that's kind of the comparison I can think of. Okay. Um, and if Maddie, if you haven't seen Death Note, the, the anime, not the Netflix movie, um, the anime, <laughs> I recommend it. It's great. Okay. It's all, the anime is on Netflix, but there's also a live action movie that you should avoid. Right. I remember when that came out and people didn't really like it. I actually haven't seen it. I just I've just heard it's not that great. Oh, okay. But yeah, like like the scene when um Donnie I I I don't know what what's what's uh Patrick the Swayze's character's name in uh in this movie. Do you remember? Jim Cunningham. Yeah, so when Donnie's like um when 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 he stands up in the middle of the assembly and then he's like this was all bullshit. I'm like that's like the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh my god, yeah. And then um and then um but then and then, but then there but then there's moments when he's like um, where, where he doesn't know how to be social and he's walking around um, with uh, Gretchen, his 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 would be potential girlfriend, and then and then, and then mm -hmm. he's talking about like these like deep things and she's like really intrigued by that, and then he'll go off on a tangent about like something like totally strange and then she's like yeah uh, okay, <laughs> um like in like like in like the first scene when they were walking one of their first scenes and they're walking down the street like that's just. Um, like that. That was also just great. That transition because I'm like, bro, you you all you almost did it, like you yeah, almost yeah. nailed it, and then and then like you 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 just said a few too many words. <laughs> it's cute. Yeah, it is. It, it it really captures that like awkwardness of being in high school. You know, you you like somebody, but you don't know what to say or talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I really did like the relationship between the two of them. Yeah. I did too. It really caught me off guard when she was killed at the end. I'm like, holy shit. Oh, I know. Yeah, that still is shocking. But then he, he goes back and he saves her. And he does. And it's like, yay. Um, And then the moment at the end when she and the mom look at each other, that's, that's just like oh. so amazing. Because it says so much and so with so little. It's It's visual storytelling. It's absolutely poetic. Yeah, definitely. It's like his mom is just like, yeah, I know something's up, you know, maybe you're part mm -hmm. of it. I'm just going to wave, you know, I'm just, I'm over mm -hmm. it at this point, you know. 
Yeah, and like how everybody has um like like you kind of just see everybody like going to sleep like when Mad World is playing. And then, um, and it's funny because I thought that was going to be like the end of the movie because I thought that was going to close out the movie. And then, mm. and then, and then, like when, then like the whole time travel thing is 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 just like so it's so unique and it's so cool because because the movie is ambiguous but it doesn't have to explain everything and that kind yeah. of makes it like like more fun to talk about and to interpret and like. There's some ambiguous movies where I'm just like I do not understand what this is saying and and like it like the rest of it doesn't work so you don't feel it. But then like when it's done right, like how David Lynch does his movies or how this movie is, because it is it is very Lynch esque in that way where like it doesn't explain everything, but like that's okay. It doesn't have to explain everything. Right. I kind of wanted to mention that the actors up for the role of Donnie were. Uh, Vince Vaughn was considered, and Mark Wahlberg and Jason Schwartzman. <laughs> so I mean, I could I could see Jason Jason I can never see Jason Schwartzman. I could see that, but Vince Vaughn, yes. holy hell, absolutely not. Mark Wahlberg, no, thank you. Did you guys see Psycho? They cast Vince Vaughn as Norman Bates. So the casting department was like, yeah, we can cast him. They they just knew he was in Psycho, but they had not seen the Psycho remake. Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to say I don't like Vince Vaughn. I'm just going to say it. I don't know if I've even seen him in anything. When I was really little, like really, really little, um, I would get him and Chevy Chase confused because I thought, really? I thought, um, like I thought that Vegas Vacation starred Vince Vaughn because of the alliteration. Um, uh, I have seen Vince Vaughn in four movies. I don't mind him in Lost in the Lost World, um, be, in the second Jurassic Park because he's like, he's like, um, like the, like he's in he's in like the one scene with the RV and he's like trying to like save Jeff Goldblum and Julianne Moore and oh um, but then like um yeah I haven't seen Dodgeball or Wedding Crashers I know I should I know uh, or Anchorman two or anything but like. Yeah, like when I was a kid, I like I always thought like Vegas Vacation, like not even the other ones, just Vegas Vacation was Vince Vaughn because they all started with the letter V. Right, makes sense. And then, and then when I got older, I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute, because I think I saw a Christmas Vacation on TV, and, and then, then, then I was like, oh, okay, so Vince Vaughn's not in this movie because I was like older, I was like twelve or something. <laughs> and then, um, and then, and then, I, then obviously when I got older, I I found out there were other movies, and I'm like, oh, okay, so it's not Vince Vaughn, but it is Chevy Chase, so alliteration. VVCC. Exactly. Or the VCU. VCU. <laughs> the Vacation Cinematic Universe. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I'm glad they went with Jake Gyllenhaal or Donnie. Um, Me too. I thought he did a great job. And then they could go on and cast Maggie as his sister, his real sister as his fake sister. <laughs> I felt like so proud of myself when I realized that. I'm like, wait, oh, yeah? those two are brother and sister. And then I'm yeah. like, wait a minute. That was that was so cool. Yeah, I think I I I, I think I can say. That this, this is my favorite performance of Jake Gyllenhaal's, even if I haven't seen everything that he's in. Oh, yeah, that's hard. Um, it is really hard because like everything he's in, he's great. Um, but like this, this might be my this. This is probably my favorite of his, just because like. Did you ever go to that thing in film school where we watched um, Paul Dano's movie Wilderness and Jake Gyllenhaal starred in that? No, did Paul Dano direct it? Paul Dano directed it. And um, Jake Gyllenhaal oh, was in it. And then we talked to like, maybe, I think it was like the first AD. Um, yeah. We did like a Zoom call Q&A with him at film school. And he said like Jake Gyllenhaal was like a shit to work with. <laughs> 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 so like that's kind of put me off a little bit on him. But I don't know. I appreciate him totally in this movie. I think he was he was only like 19 when he was in this. Now I have to fact check that. Hang on. He was born in 1980 in December, and this movie came out in 2001. So that sounds about accurate that he would have been 19. Oh, so he was 21. He was 21. But that's when it came out, right? That's when it came out. So he was like 20, 19, 20, 21 ish. Did you see Ashley Tisdale and Jerry Trainer? 
I don't know if I saw Jerry Trainer. I might have seen Ashley Tisdale. When is when is she in the movie? They're both in the same part when they're doing the Q and A with Jim Cunningham, Patrick Swayze's character. Um, mm -hmm. Ashley Tisdale's the first one to stand up, and she's like, "My sister has an eating disorder, or whatever she says." <laughs> And that's not that's not funny. Um, yes, yeah. yes, I remember. I remember. I remember being like, "That's Ashley Tisdale." Yes, so she's there, and then Jerry Trainer stands up, and he he's he asks another question. I don't remember what it was, but um, that's so funny. I love that. Isn't that great? I yeah. love Jerry Trainer. Yeah, I love. I Jerry know Trainer. he's so funny. You ever seen in the movie Best Player that he's in? No. Yeah, it's it's a Nickelodeon movie. He was in it, and Jeanette McCurdy's in it too. And it's about video oh, okay. games. I couldn't tell you what it's about, <laughs> but I just was like, I totally forgot about that movie. Because but then I looked him up on the other box, and I'm like, oh shit, I've seen that movie. And oh my I'm god, like, you ever seen that? No, I haven't. Well, there you go. There we go. Um, so then Sharita, the the girl who gets bullied in this, she you might have recently seen your. I don't think you watched the show, but. Um, some of our listeners may have watched the show White Lotus on HBO Max. Um, she plays one of the hotel staff members, the one who's pregnant. Um, nut. So she's coming back. Yeah, other than that, like it's just a great cast overall for sure. Um, Frank is played by James Duvall, and he's the kid in Independence Day. Which but kid I, in Independence Day? He's the kid. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he's Randy. He, he's Randy Quaid's kid. He's the one that doesn't like his dad, and at the end of the movie, he has respect for his dad. Okay. Yeah, I have. I don't. I I saw that a very long time ago, and I didn't like it, so I don't remember. Yeah, here's the thing. I saw that movie in a. Ho I have a story, if you do not mind, actually. Go ahead. I saw that movie in a hotel room late at night one time, or parts of it. I saw it off and on. And then I saw it on like TV or DVD or something years later, and I'm like, this movie's great. And I have it, um, I have it on Blu-ray still, I think, because I wanted to watch it because I've, I've never, I don't think I've ever watched it in widescreen because I've always watched it on DVD or VHS or whatever, and or TV, and um, and I've been meaning to watch it every year for probably the past five years, and I have not watched it. This year may be the year. But yes. I can't promise it. I try to watch it every July, and I've missed the past like five or six Julys. It's like, coming up. Come on. I know. I know. S send me a text on July fourth and say watch Independence Day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um the the moment when uh when Gretchen walks into the classroom for the first time. Yes. And then the teacher says, I think that's Drew Barrymore, isn't it? The teacher. Yeah. When the when the when the teacher's like. Uh, sit next to the boy you think is cutest. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> what teacher would say that? But like, that's so, it's so funny. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But, but it took me off guard because I'm like, what in the hell are you talking about? Like who, like I've never had a teacher say that. And if they did, that would be like awesome. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm sure I would, well, if I was me now back in high school, I would have be like, hell yeah. All right, I'll pick the cutest boy. But if I was me in high school, I don't I think I would just like sit on the floor in the back. <laughs> I would refuse to participate. <laughs> <laughs> I love um I also really liked the therapy scenes between him and Catherine Ross. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. Um like and how it progressed. And, and then it took me a bit to realize that was her. But then when I saw her name in the credits, I'm like, oh, of course that oh, was yeah, her. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then this, the one close to the end when, like, he sees Frank <gasps> in the middle of therapy, I'm like, that's so, like, disturbing and so cool. Yeah. And, like, so creepy. I just love that. So creepy. That was amazing. Yeah. And, yeah, so I don't know if you've if you've seen the uh, director's cut or not. I don't, I don't know all the differences, but I didn't know if you had seen it or if you had a preference or... Um, yeah, so I actually, I own the director's cut. I think I found it at a thrift store. The only big thing is that I know is, um, it's, and it's not even that big. Like, I don't think there's very big differences. There's just a lot of little subtle differences. Um, but there's this, the scene where you first see Sharita and everyone, all the kids are waiting at the bus stop. Mm -hmm. She just gets bullied in a way more extreme way than you see in, in the theatrical cut. Um, it's like pretty disturbing. Oh no! Yeah. Oh man! Yeah. I need to. 
that's like a big part. And uh, the yeah, other than that, I think it's just little small differences. Uh, so I don't really see that much of a difference between the director's cut and the theatrical cut, even though I have the director's cut. Um, like I'll watch either, you know. That's what it looks like. It's just like small uh, differences and stuff. Okay, so this came out in 2001, obviously. It came out in October yes. 2001, which is right yes. after September 2001, and we know what happened in yes. September 2001, and we know what this movie has in it is like a sort of plane crash type situation, um, so it almost yes. like did not get released, and it was like kind of pacing, uh, facing some pushback. Yeah, that makes sense. In the theaters, because people would be like, oh, I'm, I don't want to see this, you know, because a giant, like, plane engine falls into a house. But I think with Drew Barrymore is producing help, I think she pushed it through and, like, gave it a, bu- gave it a big budget and mm-hmm. helped to promote, promote it and everything. So I think that helped. It actually premiered in Sundance in January, and then... It was in theaters in that October. I think, yeah, I think she pushed it a little bit and everyone got together and they, they were like, yeah, let's just do it anyway, <laughs> which I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think of like what that would be like today. You know, if we had, of course, I've have you seen like a COVID movie? Like I saw that one with Anne Hathaway on HBO and it was terrible and it was about COVID and like dating. No, I it was so bad. I heard uh, about so it. So <laughs> I'm trying to think. Did you know what it was? You said Anne Hathaway was in it? Yeah, yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. Is it Locked Down? Okay, yeah, yeah. Is that what it's called? Locked Down? Yeah. Directed by Doug Lyman, the director of The Born Identity, Edge of Tomorrow, and Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Huh. Yeah. Um. One other thing I want to mention is there, it, there was a sequel made in 2009 called S. Darko. The actress who plays Samantha, um, I don't want to pronounce her name wrong. Um, she's the only actress to the only actor to be in the uh, move in both movies. She's also the girl that crawls out of the well in the ring. She's also Lilo in Lilo and Stitch and Shiraho in Spirited Away. So she has, has has had quite the filmography. Quite. And the original director of the first movie, Richard Kelly, has nothing. Do you? He says he's never seen the second one and wants nothing to do with it. Did you know that that the Voice actress of the main characters in Spirited Away and Lilo and Stitch is also Donnie's little sister and also the, the, the girl in the ring. I didn't know the girl in the ring part, but the others, yes. Yeah, I didn't know that one either. Um, I need to watch The Ring. I got a DVD of it at a thrift store. I need to watch it. Oh, yeah. You have to watch it. I love it. I love that movie. Now May Watts is in it, so I'm, in, I'm intrigued. Yeah. Um, And then... The only other thing is there's if I, 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 I almost want to track this down. There's a DVD and it's a double feature. The two movies on it are Donnie Darko and Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> two of the greatest films ever. Two, very, very released at a very similar time. Very, very, very different movies. Love them both so much. Like that would love them both so much. That was all I wanted to say about Donnie Darko, so... Oh, I've got more. Oh, you've got more? I'm ready. Bring it on. All right. So, I'm going to kind of get into some deep theories about this, but... um, So, I was... I was... Yeah, yeah, I want to know your theories. Yeah, so I was thinking, like, I wanted to deep dive. Um, I listened to this podcast about this movie by Conspiracy Theories and Unpopular Culture. So this guy Isaac did a podcast about this movie and he went he went deep, real deep with the conspiracies in this. Mm-hmm. But I got a lot out of like what he was saying. I was thinking like the deeper things of this movie like what does you know remember when grandma death whispers to Donnie and we're not able to hear it but then later he reveals what she says to her and she says she says to him yeah. and she says um every living creature on earth dies alone. He's kind of thinking about that. And like when he's in his therapy, he's like, I don't want to die alone. So I have to follow Frank's orders and commit these crimes, like flooding the high school and Mm -hmm. um, setting Jim Cunningham's house on fire uh, and carrying out, carrying a gun and shooting ultimately Frank, um, which is 
Yes. Weird. But then he does die alone. He ends up dying alone. But is he really alone? I mean, I just, I don't know what to think about every living creature dies alone because uh, he tells the story of like how his dog crawls away and like wants to be alone when she dies. And I think like that's kind of a, a common trait for some things, but not everyone dies mm-hmm. alone. I don't think, it, but then again, I'm like, you kind of do die alone because if you're, unless I, it, it's all in your own experience, you know, like you, you are leaving, you're going to the greater beyond or whatever you believe in. And it's only you, you know, like you're not going with anyone. Uh, right. Unless, I don't know. It depends on like what you believe, but like some people, I guess, are are there greeting you on the other side, or you could be dying at the same exact time as someone else. You just don't know it. So, but it feels like you're dying alone, but you're really not. So I don't know. That just made me think a little bit about like death and passing on, because I wonder if like Grandma Death, like that's her big thing. Was right. Like, she doesn't want to die alone, and that's why she's into all this time travel stuff. Okay. Yeah, so, and then I remember when Jim Cunningham is teaching, he's giving his lecture, or it's in the video, I can't remember, but he says, look at the mirror, look at yourself in the mirror. And then later, Miss Farmer says that to Donnie's mom when she's trying to get her to go, like, be the chaperone for the the girl's dance trip. Um, And that's what we see Donnie Mm -hmm. doing like the whole time is like looking in the mirror and seeing Frank. Um, And I think that's like kind of a form of an alternate dimension. Like you kind of, you look at your mirror, you can see yourself, but you can also see beyond yourself and maybe like open a sort of portal into a different realm if you're in the mirror. And uh, some other things could come out, possibly. Like your your fear, as Jim Cunningham would say, or Miss Farmer. Yeah, Miss Farmer would believe like what Jim, Jim Cunningham says. And mm-hmm. she'd be like, You're you're just afraid. Uh don't be don't be afraid. Be um give love, you know, like the difference between love and fear on the spectrum. And Right. Didn't that remind you of like hope and fear in film school when we're like uh learning about movies it's like it's you're either hoping or fearing for something to happen yes and and to be honest now i wish i had just done donnie's reaction because like well i mean i mean you would have known but like if 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 more than even like you and i had known and i had done that like like that that like that would have been really interesting like there's not just hope and fear there's all these in between it's not black and white like that yeah yeah like that like that part yeah i I like that part because it's like yeah, man. You're right. Like he's right, you know. <laughs> like, he's right. <laughs> do you think that when Donnie, um, like when when he sees that like like that like silver line blob thing coming out of him, and like he sees it throughout all the people in the party, do you think that's like tied into the mirror at all? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think that that's that's fate or destiny, and that's like our path that we're taking. So it kind of comes down to like, are we destined to fall into this path or do we have do we actually have free will and we can choose our path because you see like the the gel liquid stuff coming out of everyone and they they're following it but it's like it the path already knows that they're gonna go a certain direction that's so fascinating i love that i love that yeah i love thinking about that yeah because i don't know i mean i kind of believe on a like on a spectrum of both you know we have our free will but then also our life is going to go in a certain pattern in a certain place that maybe we can't, we don't have control over, you know? Yeah. It really fits into the whole theme of like, what is predetermined and what is up to us? What choices are up to us? Yeah. And, and if there is a higher power, then how much control do we have over our own lives? Yeah. Um, I was curious what you thought about the ending and the, the metal vessel that was, being described in like the time travel aspect um like saying that you need a metal vessel in order to time travel 
And this was the only time we see Donnie driving a car because he actually doesn't have his license. Um, but then we also see Donnie's mom and sister in an airplane, and which is the airplane that loses its turbine and falls into this his house and kills him, right? Yeah. So did you think like the metal vessel of the time travel was the airplane or was the car? Or both? I honestly thought it was the airplane. But now that you mention that about the car, that also makes sense. Because like there's the part when they're like, hmm. They're watching, so they're up on the hill, Donnie and his friends, and they're watching somebody else, like, almost, like, like I think, I think they, they almost run over Grandma Death, and, um, like, she's going to get her mail, and there's this car that's, like, really close by, and, um, and then, and then they're talking about it then, and then now I'm, now I'm wondering if that even was a metal vessel. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. I mean, I don't really have, like, any, like, theories other than what you've said because i feel like i need to like you know watch it more yeah but like yeah like that's that's so fascinating like like just 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 like as something to think about because i didn't even think it was anything other than the airplane and then when you said it was the car i'm like oh crap yeah i was thinking it would be the car because that's the thing that donnie's in and it's it he starts and be starts and ends on that hill overlooking the town uh huh. And the first time he's on a bike, and the second time he's in the car. So, like to me, that was what it was. But then, like the airplane plays a part, you know, totally. Yeah. But there was one more scene I wanted to talk about, which was when Gretchen and Donnie are presenting their science project in front of the class, and they mm -hmm. come up with the those baby goggles that babies wear at night, and yes. the parents put in whatever imagery they want into the goggles, which would hopefully be peaceful and love and happiness, you know. Yeah. But then one of the stupid bully kids is like, well, what if they put in, like, like blood and guy uh, violence and, uh, like, demon shit? And <laughs> I, was, I was honestly th thinking the same thing because, you know, like, some parents out there would do that. Yeah. And even though that... Gretchen was like, is that what you would do to your kids? He'd probably be like, yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> and then what the teacher says is interesting, though. He's like, do you think that babies need the darkness when they're sleeping? Like, like when they're sleeping, do you think the babies need darkness in order to uh, develop and evolve in the way that they're supposed to? And this kind of goes back to, like, Donnie's, love versus fear good versus evil thing where you kind of have to have darkness and the light to balance out each other like there's not one without the other and yes even, even though like i think i think they were they were onto something maybe with like a good idea of positive imagery when a baby's sleeping but i don't think during the sleep is when you need to do that because i think the baby needs to sleep you know Yes. Yes. <laughs> and like not have its own, not have like imagery projected into its mind mm -hmm. while it's supposed to be developing its own mind while it's sleeping, you know. But like dur during the day when it's awake and stimuli and everything like that's different. That's where they develop. Uh, that's where your like positive influence and um, everything comes into play. Mm -hmm. um, so I think like that's important. I mean, yeah, there are some things you can't control, and that's uh, that. I think that goes back to the free will and determined fate, nature versus nurture, of it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you said it really well. I don't really have any other thoughts about that scene because, like, you said everything I thought of. Thanks. Yeah, I love this movie. It's a great movie. I could watch it over and over. I'm debating if tonight I'm going to watch this or Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> nice. Or why not both? Why not both? Yeah, sounds good to me. So, would you like to talk about what we've watched recently? Yes, you can go ahead. All right, bear with me. So, I think we talked about the Fantastic Beast sequels last time. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So, I, I we I've seen all three of them now. So, my roommate and I started this movie, and it's always been on my watch list because of its uniqueness. It is called. <clears throat> 
Night of the day, of the dawn, of the sun, of the bride, of the return, of the revenge, of the terror, of the attack, of the evil, mutant, alien, flesh-eating, hellbound, zombified, living dead, part two. Wow. That is the longest movie title, I think. I love it. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. It was really funny until it wasn't funny. Okay. So basically, it's, it's, it's like a redub of Night of the Living Dead, which I have not seen, to be clear. Um, and it was really funny and stupid and like just the right kind of vibe to um, just, 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 you know, just, it, 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 it just had that vibe that was great. And then it got really offensive and it became, and, and there was a lot of like, like jokes about, you know, being gay and then, and like a lot of them were very insensitive because this was made in the nineties and, hmm. you know, so then, then, then we were just like, nah, we don't need to keep watching this. Mm. I don't think any joke was so offensive that like we turned it off, but like they like after just hearing a couple of the same kind of ones in a row, we're just like, nah. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it was funny. Oh, uh, up until that, it was funny. Okay. And then I believe I told you about this movie, but I we watched a movie called The Earth Day Special. It is it is um my multiverse of madness. <laughs> it has so many famous people uh harold ramus is in it as egon from ghostbusters uh christopher lloyd shows up in the delorean as doc brown um Rhea perlman and danny devito are watching the movie like the movie within the movie on tv the cast of cheers is there um yeah michael douglas jane fonda morgan freeman uh, the Fresh Prince, Will Smith. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris is there as Doogie Howser. Um, Dustin Hoffman's in it. Robin Williams is in it. Jonathan Brandis is in it. Um, Bette Midler is in it. The Golden Girls are in it. Um, uh, Rick Moranis, G- The Muppets. It's, it's, what it's the insane. heck? And then, and then they're all talking about climate change. Oh. I think. Meryl Streep is in it. What's it called? It's called the Earth Day Special. Okay, where where did you see it? It was on YouTube. Oh, YouTube. Okay. And then um, I had the pleasure of seeing the first two Star Trek movies in the theater. Nice. And seeing Star Trek: The Motion Picture in theaters was absolutely incredible. That's awesome. Um, that movie has one of my favorite like. It's one of my favorite movie openings of all time because one, it has an overture and we need to bring that back. And two, um, and two, the visuals are just so mesmerizing and hypnotic. Um, it's very 2001, a space odyssey esque, mm. um, but it's Star Trek. Um, and then Star Trek two is obviously great. No, not ever, ever. It's, it's what everybody said it says it is. It's a good movie. It's got a really perfect ending. Um, Halfway through the movie, this one dude started snoring really loudly <laughs> in the theater. Oh no! And this one other guy, this one other guy up in the corner was like, "Well, that dude wasted five bucks," <laughs> and, and 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 that was like more entertaining than the movie. Like the movie was good, but like that was <laughs> that was amazing. And then I think like everybody laughed when he said that, and then like people were laughing at the movie, and and it, it just felt like this like communal like. That's fun. People were really into it. People were really into it because they were like, like there was a lot of loud popcorn and soda consumption, and that's when you know people are really into a movie. Nice. Um, so yeah, that was great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I saw the new Top Gun movie. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say. It's good. Okay. Um, and then after seeing, I don't know if I've talked about Multiverse of Madness or not, but I, I did like Multiverse of Madness. Um, I did not really like the um, how the cameos felt really shoehorned, mm. and also um, the fact that uh, spoilers, I guess it's John Krasinski, not e- not Eo and Grafud as Mister Fantastic. So, Tuan and I rewatched the two Fantastic Four films from our childhood, two thousand five and two thousand seven. Um, and yeah, Eowyn Grafud definitely should have been in Multiverse of Madness. I don't know why he wasn't, especially because all the other actors were like alternate versions of characters they had played or characters they knew. And it, it was just like, I, I, I believe that I, when I, when I watched the two early 2000s movies, it's like, yeah, smartest man in the universe. Sure. 
But then when John Krasinski shows up, it's like, it's fucking Jim from The Office. Like, yeah, yeah. And, you know, like, like, like that, that's not, great, but, like, he's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. I don't know. And, and to be clear, a lot of fans really did do really want John Krasinski to be cast and Emily Blunt to be cast as Sue, Sue and Reed. Hmm. I could see that. Yeah, but then... I could see Emily Blunt more as a superhero than John Crimson. But Emily Blunt said she doesn't want to do superhero movies, so... Good for her! Good for her. Yes, we love you. We love you. So, yeah, watching both Fantastic Four movies, they're both mixed, but I definitely had a great time watching both of them. They have some things that don't hold up because the director's probably not that great of a person, Um, Because the reason why they didn't make a third one was because he and Jessica Alba had conflicts and they kind of, you know, Mm. they they, kind of sexualize her and don't, like, they. it's kind of like she kind of has to, like, strip down and turn invisible and it's, like, humiliating and Mm -hmm. then it's just like that. Those scenes don't really fly or work that well, you know? Yeah. Like, not saying they ever did, but, like, um, but like especially now when you watch it, it's just like, oh, uh, that, that's not good. Yeah, I forgot that was a thing. Yeah, that, that was an early 2000s thing for sure. Thank yeah. God we've moved away from that. Really, those movies are enjoyable, and I'm really, I'm really bummed that it's not, that it's John Krasinski instead of, instead of Ian Griffud. I'm trying to say his name and not butcher it, so if I butchered your name, good sir, I apologize. <laughs> and then Bo Burnham released the Inside Outtakes. Oh, he did. Have you seen those yet? Yeah, he did. I'll send it to you. It's like it's like an hour long, and, <gasps> and then he has like two other Jeffrey Bezos songs, and he's got like this one song about a chicken, and it's like the most <laughs> moving shit you've ever listened to in your life. No way. And they put them the songs out on Spotify too. But if you want to watch it, I'll send you the. Um... Oh wow! Okay, we can link that below too. If it's if it, is it on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, I'll send it on YouTube. Sweet. On uh, Spotify, they have the inside outtakes as a separate album, and then they have the original album plus the outtakes as like a deluxe one single album. So that's really cool. Awesome. With Lucy and Graham, I watched uh, Speed Racer, the Wachowskis film. Okay. Um, which I had never seen, and it wasn't my jam. Like I, I didn't really vibe with it, but I respect the fact that they just went all out. You know what I mean? Like the. Like the visuals are so extremely like 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 you like if you don't vibe with this, it's like that's like a huge point of the movie. But like it's so like mm-hmm. like just just like the craft is so um is so like there's so much passion and heart put into it, you know. And that that that's like one thing that's really great about um the movies that they make is that like just you 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 can just tell like they love movies so much. Like when you watch the Matrix movies or when you watch um. Uh, even even like Bound, which was their first movie, which is also super underrated. Go watch Bound if you haven't. Um, um, like you can just tell that like they love movies so much, and I respect the hell out of that. So that's good. Yeah. Have you seen Bound before, Maddie? No, I have not. Um, it's it's quite good. Um, they it was made before The Matrix. Um, uh, nineteen. I think it might have even been their first movie um but 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 it's but it's it's kind of like a it's it, it's like a thriller about these um like these uh i don't even know how to describe it. it's complicated but it's really good um so i'd recommend looking that one up okay um so i guess the only two i haven't seen or the only yeah let's see i haven't seen uh jupiter ascending or cloud atlas and i really want to see cloud atlas i think i've seen that Cloud Atlas. Yeah. And I guess I haven't seen the show since 8, um, but I've also heard that's great. Um, and then I think I have one more. Or I have two more. Or three more. <laughs> Are you still with me? Yes. Because RRR is the greatest film of all time, um, Mr. Tuin and I decided to watch all of S.S. Rajamuthi's films because, of course, we're going to. So, um, we started with, uh, uh, Bahubali, the beginning, which is the first of two part story about Bahubali. And it was a lot to take in. There's a lot going on, but it was, it was, it was enjoyable. Um, and I'm excited to watch his other movies. 
And then I had never seen um, the movie, and I'm Maddie. I'm actually really curious if you've seen this movie. I've never seen the movie uh, Fireproof, and until recently. No, I have not seen it. Uh, I remember it being a big deal when it came out, though, as being like a Christian movie. Oh boy, are you ready for this? Yes. So, it's not a good movie. First and foremost, <laughs> it's not a good movie. The acting is terrible. It's it's very on the nose, um, and it's very, um, it's very my uh my thing. I think with um, with Christian film specifically, is that it comes from more the like like it obviously it comes more from that perspective rather than just being kind of like 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 oh like here's this story and then like here's like the faith side of it like it always feels like the faith part is like is like shoehorned in Mm -hmm. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um or like like it's like really blatant in the movie but it never feels like it flows with the with the story Mm. so the movie is about a couple that should be divorced but they're not (laughs) <laughs> um and um Kirk Cameron plays this guy that's like that's like this abusive asshole um to his wife. Who is this? And then and then uh Kirk Cameron is the actor. He's from Growing Pains. He made that movie called Saving Christmas that everybody doesn't like. Okay. Um and then he was he he was also the host of the uh of the uh television special The Secrets of the Back to the Future trilogy. Wow, okay. Deep cut. So that's where I knew him from. <laughs> Of course, and then and then when I was a kid, because it was on one of my it was on my DVD for the Back to the Future movies. Oh. Like that's, that was like the behind the scenes that I watched. Okay, and then and that was made like right after the movie, so it was like on like one of the discs, and I just remember watching it as a kid and being like, oh okay. And then I, I remember I remember asking my mom who Kirk Cameron was, and she's like, oh yeah, he was on like Growing Pains, and I'm like, oh okay, cool, cool. And then like years later, I'm like, wait, Chris, Kirk Cameron's like an evangelical Christian. <laughs> And then he's come under scrutiny because of like you know just a lot of reasons. But anyway, so um, so yeah, so Fireproof is about Kurt Cameron being an abusive asshole and learning to not be an abusive asshole. Like the idea of the movie of like of like doing of like getting out of your own head and focusing on like doing something like for your significant other like every day. Like that's like yeah, like 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 I can I can I can gel with that. That makes sense. But then, like, my sticking points are everything else. <laughs> yeah. In the movie. Like, everything. <laughs> like, the main character is awful. Like, 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 like he's an awful, awful person. Oh, no. And, yeah. So, um, sorry to anyone who likes that movie. <clears throat> um, if, 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 if you genuinely love that movie, more power to you. I genuinely love movies that people, that other people don't like. So, and I don't like movies other people love. So, that, yep. that, that's the subjectiveness of cinema. Yep. It is. It's true. Um, but I will say it was fun to watch and it was fun to take like the uh the like messages out of it and kind of dissect them mm-hmm. and think about them. Mm-hmm. And that that I really liked. So even even if I didn't like the movie that much, I liked like like the like like how I processed it. Yeah, you really. still got something out of it. Yes. And then I saw the final Jurassic film, Jurassic World Dominion. Is it the final one? They say it's the final one. Oh, God. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. And I also watched the short films that preceded it. Um, so the first five minutes of the movie, and I'm so a few months ago they released uh, this short film on YouTube called The Prologue, and it was the first five minutes of the movie. Like when The Dark Knight came out um, in 2008, they released like the first few minutes like on YouTube or in IMAX or something, and that was like the beginning of the movie, like the first eight minutes of the movie. Oh really? And then they did this. They did the same thing with Jurassic World Dominion, except these five minutes are not in the movie. They took oh. them out of the movie, even though the movie is already two and a half hours. And instead, beforehand, they put in a fucking Minions ad. And it's like, thanks for watching Jurassic World, and then come back to see the new Minions movie. And I'm like, I will, I will not come back to see the new Minions movie. What? Sorry, but no, I'm not gonna watch the mini movie. <laughs> If I no. ev- if I ever have children and they say to me, Dad, I want to watch the Minions movies, I'm like, go ask your mother. I am not watching those with you. <laughs> no, you say, go fuck yourself. We're not watching. We're watching Sleepwalkers tonight, son. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't even go ask your mother. Don't go ask your mother. Because you know your mother will say, okay, sure. But no, not allowed. 
yeah yeah it's it's, it's like no we're gonna watch quality cinema like rr and uh con air and back to the future and star wars and sleepwalkers and the the, the um, breakfast club yes uh the boy who could fly war games uh, you can watch frozen okay frozen's way better all right Oh my god, I, 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 I would love to watch Frozen. Like, I, I will watch Disney movies all day long, you know? Like, Frozen, Tangled, Moana, Sleeping yeah, Beauty, yeah. Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King. We're exactly. watching, we're not watching Minions, we're watching, like, The Lion King. Because like, that's, like, a much better movie, and it will make you think about life, and it's the same, you get the same thing as if you watch Return of the King, but you save, like, half the time. More than half the time. Yeah. The Lion King is seriously like 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 if you took all the Lord of the Rings and made it into an 80 minute movie and it somehow worked, that's the power of the Lion King. It's like that much story, but it works. So anyway, um <laughs> Jurassic Park 6. Um I don't know. It's meh. Okay, first of all, you you said you were going to go see it, and I was like, you're going to spend your money to go see that? And you said, no, I won a free ticket. How did you get a free ticket? I, th- I signed up for Cinemark Rewards. Mm. Because we go to the theater all the time. And I ended up not using that free ticket because... um. Oh, no. Because <laughs> um, my roommate had gotten the tickets before, and then he forgot that I had that, but the seats were full, so he wanted to get secure seats. And I'm like, bro, bro, it's oh. all good. Like, don't, don't worry. I'll, I'll get a... Next gotcha. movie we go to, I'll get a free movie. Yeah, that's but nice. I did. But I did get the exclusive uh, Jurassic Park cup with the movie. That was my souvenir. Oh, that's fun. So, yeah, yeah. So I filled I filled it with soda and ice, and then I was like, "Here, here, I'm I'm drinking this." And I put it next to me and watched the movie, and now it's sitting in my cabinet in my kitchen. <laughs> and you will remember it forever. Probably more so than the movie. <laughs> Okay, so how'd it go? I will weave the grand tale uh, right after we hear this word from our sponsor. Hello. Uh, blah, 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 <laughs> something or other. Use our promo code. Go to, go to betterhelp.com slash film therapy. Betterhelp.com. Um, <laughs> um, thank you to Allstate oh for sponsoring us. Thank you, Liberty Mutual. Yes, oh if God. you want your if you want a fifteen percent discount on Liberty Mutual, go to libertymutual dot com slash film therapy. We're having this promotion only <laughs> this week. The episode isn't even out yet, but we're only having it the week of uh whatever fucking day it is, June fourteenth. Yeah. yeah. So from the fourteenth yeah. to the twenty first, that's our Liberty Mutual. Um, that that's when you can apply. That's when you can do that Liberty Mutual promotion. But the episode won't even be out until like two weeks from now. So sorry, you're shit out of luck. <laughs> sorry about that. Thank you, Liberty it. Mutual. Thanks, Liberty Mutual thank you oh my god anyway so here's what i thought of jurassic park 6 i loved seeing the original three actors together on screen again it's something i've wanted since i was a child sam neill lorder and jeff goldblum they are all still just as amazing they've all aged so gracefully um but when the movie is about chris pratt and bryce Dallas howard's characters and their clone daughter I really wish I cared because wait, I like wait, both wait, wait. of those actors a lot. Did you say cloned daughter? Yeah. So Maddie, have you seen the previous, which what Jurassic Park movies have you seen? I'm about to blow I've your seen, mind. I just, I just saw Jurassic world. Um, you didn't see the second one. Oh boy. Here we go. I didn't, I didn't see the second one, but I, I mean, I've seen all the originals, but, and then I just saw Jurassic world. So, okay. They have a cloned daughter. Yes, yes, I'm getting there. So Jurassic oh, World Fallen Kingdom, the fifth movie, yeah. is about the the island has a volcano on it, and the dinosaurs can't be on there because they're going to fucking die. So Bryce Dallas Howard recruits Chris Pratt because they broke up between movies, but now they're, they're then in, in the second one, in the fifth one. Mm. And then, they're, uh, then they go to the island, save most of the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs get taken to this underground facility under this rich asshole's mansion. And then, then, then the dinosaurs get loose, and it becomes a monster movie in this mansion. Oh! And there's also, and there's also this guy that looks clearly like Donald Trump, and he's trying to sell <gasps> weaponized dinosaurs to the highest bidder. All oh these like God. evil corporate guys waving their their little um, 
uh, auction their bids. handle things. Yeah, their bids waving their hands around. They're, yeah, that, that's literally what happens. And then there's this girl that they get close to, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. And it turns out that she's a clone of this per, of the main bad guy's granddaughter. So there's cloned Whoa. humans in this universe now. Oh my also, god. Also, sorry, spoilers for the Jurassic World sequels. So then the movie ends with um all the dinosaurs are in this room and they're all going to die. And then, you know, and also they have Jeff Goldblum at the beginning and the end of the movie because Ian Malcolm is always right. That's the thing with these movies. Mm-hmm. You know, like Ian Malcolm, Jeff Goldblum's character, he's always right. And then, then he's saying, like, you know, like we need to let these dinosaurs, like, we can't we can't let them exist with us because because that's fucking ridiculous. And me, I'm like, guys, there's a whole second island from the Lost World. Why wouldn't you take the dinosaurs there? That's already that's already like a habitat for them. Like at the end of the Lost World, John Hammond's like, oh, oh, this, th- these creatures need to live here in peace. And then in Jurassic World, they're like, oh yeah, John Hammond wanted us to make another theme park. And I'm like, mm-hmm. no, Mm-mm. no, this script is wrong. Yeah. Like I know it's Jurassic Park, and 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 it's it's like it should have just been one to two movies anyway. But anyway. <clears throat> So then in Fallen Kingdom, all the dinosaurs are going to die. And then the little clone girl flips the switch and lets them loose onto the world. Because she says they're clones and she's a clone. And since she's alive, they're alive. So she releases them all into the fucking wild. And the movie ends with Jeff Goldblum saying, welcome to Jurassic World. We have to learn how to coexist with these species. Pretty interesting, huh? So this new one, that's not even the one I saw. So the new one takes place four years later. Okay. And it's Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard and this little girl that's become their surrogate daughter. She's a clone. And she lives, they, they all live in this cabin in the, middle of the, in the middle of the woods. Okay. So then instead of the movie being about dinosaurs being loose in the world, yeah. um, Laura Dern goes to find Sam Neill because there are swarms of locusts eating all the crops. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know, the, yeah. la- the last movie is like, hey, dinosaurs out in the world. Cool. But the you know what's like, really hey. an issue? <laughs> These pests. It's like, guys, this isn't fucking Exorcist 2. Like, you can't just make a movie and just have Locust show up. That's Actually, that's actually I should make that a list. Movie sequels that feature Locust that the first film had no mention. <laughs> Exorcist 2 in Jurassic World Dominion. <laughs> and that's it. Hang on. New list. That's so funny. Oh, my God. So Sam Neill, uh, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum, all of them on screen together again is amazing. Like their chemistry is still there between the three of them. Their their characters still feel the same because that's you know because the actors are still great, and um, and all of them kind of have like a nice little like final bow kind of thing. Okay. But here's the thing: it's two movies at once. It's mm. Jurassic Park four with Alan and Ellie and Ian, and then they're trying to stop the fucking locusts. And then on the other side, it's Jurassic World 3, where it's Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, and their daughter. Mm-hmm. Like, they're trying to go save their daughter, and they're going to, like, all these different places to go mm. and find her. And there's also, like, dinosaurs running around. Yeah. And the main, the main bad guy is played by Richard Parker from The Amazing Spider-Man, Campbell Scott. Oh. And, and he's, his character is in the first movie. So, you know, in, the, in Jurassic Park 1, when, uh, when, uh, Wayne Knight, he's working at Jurassic Park, but then he, then he's trying to steal the samples yeah. of the dinosaurs in the in the shaving cream can. Yeah. So the guy that the guy that he meets who like puts him up to that job, he's the bad guy in the last movie because 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 he's the he's the leader of the rival company of John Hammond's company. Oh. So um so it's like also about stopping him, but he doesn't he doesn't really do much because 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 it's just Campbell Scott walking around being a villain. Okay. Um, they made Laura Dern. They they gave Laura Dern the line of act. She actually says he slid into my DMs. No. And I'm like, Laura, honey, I'm mm. so sorry they made you say that. <laughs> we are here for you, and we love you, and we are so sorry that you had to say something. That you had to say that. Peace and love, Laura Dern. S- someone wrote that down and was like, "That's a good idea." And I'm we like, should "Make Laura Dern's." Yes. Of all fucking people, <laughs> Laura Dern should say that. And I'm like, you guys, Laura Dern is way too like, like she's Laura Dern. You 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 you, you can't do things like that. 
No. To to somebody like Laura Dern. No. And all and also there are scenes where they're Chris Pratt and is who like their surrogate daughter's like running from dinosaurs and then she's like scared for her life and I'm like, but but you're the reason the dinosaurs are out in the first place. Yeah. What the hell. Yeah, so that, that's literally how the last movie ended, where she, like, pushes the switch that's and so releases dumb. all the dinosaurs. Also, there's a cloned human, like... Yeah, what? I mean, I guess we could see, like, that's where this whole thing was going. We're gonna include humans, but... Uh, uh yeah, I don't know. I'm not invested. If, if you want to see the original actors together again, just look up their scenes on YouTube, um... Um, cause, cause, cause that, that's the reason to see the movie. That's the only reason I watched the movie, to be honest, was cause they suckered me in with those three actors. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why they brought a lot of, like, that's probably why they got a lot of the people to watch. Right. But like, they hadn't been together, all three of them, since movie one. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, so I'd say, so for those who haven't seen any of the Jurassic Park movies, I'm sorry, I just spoiled them. But Jurassic Park 1 is is a must-see. It's like one of the best movies ever made. Spielberg made it. Go watch it. Lost World's pretty solid. Um, and then, yeah, Lost, Lost World is solid. I like it. I will defend that movie. Um, and then Jurassic Park 3 is, like, offensively stupid. And then um, Jurassic World. I don't think I'm. I, I I think actually what we should do is we should just like we should just get Davis on the phone and just say, hey, just randomly in this episode, you need to tell us why you don't like Jurassic World because he can explain it much better than I can. Yeah. But yeah, so that was very long. Thank you for enjoying, hopefully, or listening to all of that. Okay, I'm just gonna mention one thing. So I was a fan of. The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix, the horror series that came out in 2018. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've heard. I've heard that's really good. So good. I loved it so much. And then they came out with, like, season two of The Haunting of Bly Manor. Can't wait to see mm-hmm. what they do next. And I... Okay, so this is... It's random, but, like, I started watching this film called The Haunting on Prime. Amazon Prime from 1999, and it stars Lily Taylor. Okay. Uh, who is I've also like watched a ton of her stuff recently. She's like the wife in the show on HBO. No, uh, no, the show also on Prime called Outer Range. It's kind of like a sci-fi western, okay. which is my jam right now. Um, and she's the mom, Carolyn in The Conjuring. And she's also in, you know, like classics like um, Mystic Pizza. Yeah, Mystic Pizza. So she was in this movie with Catherine Zeta-Jones and Liam Neeson. And um, it was about a haunted house. Here's the synopsis. Dr. David Morrow invites Eleanor Vance, Luke Sanderson, and Theo, just Theo, to the eerie and isolated Hill House to be subjects for a sleep disorder study. The unfortunate guests discover that Morrow is far more interested in the sinister mansion itself, and they soon see the true nature of its horror. So she gets in there, um, Lily Taylor, and she's like, Hi, I'm Eleanor, but everyone calls me Nell. Okay, and you're watching Disney Channel. (laughs) In The Haunting of Hill House, um, like one of the characters' names is Nell. And she's like one of the, you know, most important characters. So I'm like, okay, all right. And then Catherine, Jada, Catherine Zeta-Jones goes, hi, I'm Theo. And I was like, hmm, the only other time I've heard Theo as a character name as like a woman is in The Haunting of Hill House. Hmm. And she's like, she comes out and she's all like sexualized and like immediately you can, like she says some things that like make you ensue that she's, Make you infer that she's bisexual and she's just like out there with her sexuality, which is like totally what Theo is like in The Haunting of Hill House. And then Owen Wilson comes in. He's like, hi, my name's Luke, which is also a character in The Haunting of Hill House. And then Liam Neeson comes in. He's the doctor of the experiment. And he's like, welcome to Hill House. And I'm like, oh, shit, what is this? I was like blown out of my mind because I had no idea that these were connected. And I guess they're just um, based on the same book, 
Yeah, the book is called The Haunting of Hill House. I've seen that. Yes. On um Yes. Also, there's a movie called The Haunting from 1963 that's also an adaptation. Bitch, just wait. <laughs> Cause I also watched that one. <laughs> I can never remember if I've seen that one. So I watched the whole um, The Haunting movie, and it was it was good. I mean, I found it entertaining. It has a terrible score on Rotten Tomatoes, but, like, it's fine. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I like Lily Taylor. Um, That's all that matters. That is all that matters. You liked it. You enjoyed it. <laughs> That's all that matters. Thank, thank you. So then I was perusing, I guess this was HBO Max, um, and I found... Uh, this movie called House on Haunted Hill. And I was like, huh, I wonder if that's related. So I clicked on it. It's from, yeah, 1959. And it was, it it sounded kind of similar to The Haunting, which is like somebody invites over a, a group of people to like a haunted house. So like in this one, this husband invites over like a bunch of random people uh, to have like a is that Vincent Price in that one? Yes, yes. And um, he v- invites a bunch of people over for his wife's birthday, even though like they don't know any of these people, but they're just like a random eclectic group of people. And he wants to see like how they react to being scared in like a haunted house. Yes, it was kind of freaky. It was like it was entertaining. It was fun. Then there was like so many twists and turns at the end. It was crazy. But it was definitely disconnected from The Haunting and The Haunting of Hill House. Um, But I don't know. I just I was like really happy that I found all of these connected things because I love The Haunting of Hill House series. Yeah, I just wanted to like immerse myself in that for a bit. So that's what I did. (laughs) That's pretty much it. That is amazing. And I actually have an anecdote for that story. The movie you watched, the Vincent Price one. House on Haunted Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, when the movie came out, uh, they they had a gimmick called Emergio, and in some theaters there was a pulley system which allowed a plastic skeleton to be flown over the audience during a scene later in the movie. <gasps> probably when they like pull the skeleton out of the acid bin. <laughs> yes, and I've I've seen I've seen the clip of like the woman being pushed into the acid. Okay, okay. I've seen that, and then, um. That movie was also remade in 1999 called House on Haunted Hill. Not to be confused with the 1999 movie, The Haunting, oh. based on the book, The oh, Haunting no. of Hill House. Oh, no. Oh, shoot. I missed one. Now I have to go watch that. And in 2007, that one, The House on Haunted Hill from 1999, was followed by a direct-to-DVD sequel called Return to House on Haunted Hill. <gasps> oh, snap. Which, then there was also a third one. And then they uh then they canceled that. Aww. There you go. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, oh, the the haunting on hill, the haunting of Hill House. Like, I don't know. I mean, it was super well done, but I also did love the story. So I kind of want to like read the original book and see what that's all about. Like how that relates to all of these movies it. that have adapted it. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Like, make it. Like, 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 just, just do a complete deep dive and then make like a huge YouTube video essay on it and then get rich and famous. I then should. tell people to listen to our podcast. I should. Yeah. So what are we going to watch next time? Uh, next time we are going to be watching the Netflix Christmas comedy, uh, Let It Snow. So, um. Oh boy. We'll be talking about that next week for episode 55. So yeah, um, make sure to, make sure to come and listen to that one. All right, yeah, so go home and watch Let It Snow. We're going to have Christmas in July. Yes. And uh, also Christmas in June, if you haven't listened to that episode. Go back and do that. Yeah, go listen to it. We love Christmas. We love Halloween. We do. It should just be all year round. Yeah, we should just do one Halloween, one Christmas a month. Yes. I definitely want to watch this movie in October, like make it a seasonal October watch. Yeah, because it takes place around Halloween. Donnie Darko, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. And keep therapizing. Bye.